Hey guys and gals, Malkuth 1974 back at you with a new episode of our Apollo mission series. Today we're going to take a little sidestep and explain a little bit what we're looking at here. I have gone and upgraded my playthrough to Kerbal Space Program version 1.0. And a couple of missions I'm doing right now are the new civilian contracts that are included in 1.0 and a... Uh, satellite delivery mission. Now I'm going to mix these missions because uh, the civilian missions in the new KSP 1.0 are very interesting. They're made to mix. Well, they seem to be made to mix with certain things. You can see in the screen right there, I just actually, you saw that there's two civilian Kerbals actually on my ship, which is completely different than the way I used to do it in uh, Mission Controller, where I didn't actually have any real representation of a Kerbal. So, at this point, we're going to use the Apollo pod, our new Apollo pod that I've, I've dubbed the Apollo. Uh, it's just an Apollo Cub pod that can carry a satellite into orbit and then drop it off at the same time while we carry, carry some Kerbals. Now, in KSP 1.0, we actually have a new aerodynamic system and a new heating system, which means we no longer need deadly reentry or FAR to do anything. Now this mission is a little bit special. Now normally when you take off you want to do a uh, prograde turn for an equatorial uh, orbit of Kerbin, but the satellite mission is actually calling for a retrograde turn, meaning we're going the opposite way of prograde that we would normally do. Now this is a mission controller contract. I have updated mission controller for version 1.0. I've been working on it for two weeks, as you guys know from the past few episodes when we're using it. Uh, one of the down downsides to upgrading to my current playthrough is that I took everything other than the vessels, because obviously I had a few uh, extra parts that are not included. So when we do the Apollo Duna missions, which is coming up in the next couple episodes, we are going to be using vanilla KSP and version 1.0 with its new heat dynamics and, aerodynam and aerodynamics. So that's something to keep in mind. Yeah, I'm just checking the, uh, out what I need to do. Everything looks good. Looks like we're going to get the satellite up and going. Uh, another thing in Kerbal Space Program 1.0 is fairings. As you can see on the top of my vessel, those are f the, the new fairings for 1.0. I, I actually love them. And I actually had an inner stage fairing right there, if you guys actually noticed. And I noticed a slight little bug with uh, when you do it that way. It doesn't seem, it seems to uh, do something to your engine and you actually have to, I don't know, it's its weird. This is like the second test launch I did of this vessel. And the first time I did it, I could not actually start uh, that engine after I separated the fairings. But in the case of my previous try, I didn't actually uh, separate the fairings. I just kept them uh, part of it, like an interstage fairing. And it seemed to cause a small bug with uh, the engine there. But this time I actually broke the fairings off and everything seems to be fine. Again, we are in a retrograde orbit. I'm actually trying to set this up because we actually have a, a strange inclination. If you look at the inclination for uh, the satellite, we need to be at. I'm trying to get as close to it as I possibly can. I will actually have to finish it later with the actual satellite. But for now, we're getting pretty close and everything's good. So another thing we have for Kerbal Space Program 1.0 is uh, resource mining, which is pretty neat. I might try to incorporate that somehow into the Apollo Duna missions when we start setting up for that. But there we go. We just blew the fairings off, and now you can actually see the satellite. And the way I set this up is that first, actually, we have to set up our orbit to be uh, quite, you know, better than it is. <laughs> we need to be in orbit. We need to be in orbit. So we're going to set that up, get everything going. Uh, I do have Kerbal Engineer installed, which will probably be the only mod I actually install for when we do this phase of the Apollo land, Apollo Duna landing. So that is something that is coming. Don't worry. I actually did have a few episodes uh, already recorded with uh, .90, and I decided. Well, actually. It's kind of I have I kind of have this disease that's called I have to use everything that's brand new, so I I can't physically play .90 when point when 1.0 is out. It's just it's just 
it's just not impossible. I couldn't get the episodes done quick enough to actually uh, do it. So I decided to can those uh, episodes and remake everything. And this is where we are. So there we go. Uh, our interstage was just taken away. And I'm using the rest of this to get us into orbit. And I'm completing a lot of the objectives for the civilian contracts. Now remember, there's two civilians on here. One of the civilians I have to bring into an orbit, and the other one I had to bring into a suborbital trajectory. And we already did that, obviously, when we took off and we actually hit orbit, and then we kind of left orbit. That's all you need to do for that. So at this point, I am just trying to get rid of the satellite. This is a simple satellite mission from Mission Controller. Uh, it has a, I believe you you need to have, I can't see it right now. Anyway. So this is where things get a little bit weird again. I actually have issues trying to uh, go. I don't know if these are like small little bugs or whatnot. Uh, there it is. I couldn't actually get to my satellite, even though it does have an automated thing on it. And I'm still not on it. I'm actually on something else. So I'm just trying to quickly trying to get to the satellite to find out to get it to where I can get the inclination to the correct heading. I think I'm on it. There we go. Finally, yes. There we go. This is just a simple satellite. Nothing. Oh, I didn't know I was heading for that. Uh, please don't break my stuff. Nope. Ah. Uh, uh, get away! Get off me! <laughs> well, as you all know, that is a typical Apollo, a typical Malkuth Apollo vessel issue where you have that that separator or separatron that always is in our way when we separate. It's nothing new. It's the it's the calling card of the Apollo, my Apollo crafts all the time. So here we go. All I'm doing is trying to get us into a good inclinational orbit. I'm using, I need to get to what? No, actually I'm getting us to a, uh, the actual height that we need to get. So I'm setting my APA, my max APA to under 27, uh, 275. No, actually, I'm having a real time reading those numbers this post screen. 273525. There, there. Uh, I will just read it like simpleton. So there we go. We got that all set up. And now I have to get uh, the PEA set up correctly. That means we just have to do a few uh, time accelerations here. Now, a, a good, a good uh, hint for if you ever need to make any adjustments to your inclination the farther away you are from Kerbin the less Delta V it will cost you and in this case we need to get to what I said before 273525 below that uh, for both PA and APA and we'll, it'll help us out a little bit it's not going to really cost us all that much because we really don't have that much to go right now right now we're at 173.21354 and and we only need to get to 160 between 161 and 166 for an inclination. So really, we don't have that huge of a change to do. So right now, I'm just setting up the BA periapsis. I am very I I I really really like Kerbal Space Program 1.0. I think they did a a really excellent job, and uh, I especially love the new. Uh, civilian contracts they added which is going to completely cause me to get rid of my civilian contracts because it's just not needed anymore and uh, Arsenal or Arsenide he's the guy that made fine print uh, he made the civilian contracts I believe for uh, version 1.0 he made most of the contracts for 1.0 that's who they go to to make their contracts now and I think he he hit a ballpark on the civilians because the, to me they are designed to be something that you can add so uh, if you're going to the moon and you have a three-man pod and you got a guy that wants to go a, a civilian that wants to go to the moon you add him to you add that contract to your current mission and you put him on your vessel and you will get an extra you know 20 40 thousand uh, credits for that so there we go we're all set up we actually finished we have to actually finish the time now I'm just going to let the time acceleration run. There it goes. Now that is all set. We are done. We can actually start and go back to our crew pod where our civilians are. Now I'm not sure if he set it up to uh, 
any... I still have that on there. <laughs> Oops. Yeah, you're supposed to get rid of that. I'm not... I wasn't... I completely forgot to do that. That's actually bad because you don't want that mass on you when you... uh when you're trying to get to orbit and we'll open those up there we go so yeah this uh, being 1.0 totally caused me to redesign my Apollo pod uh, a little bit this is uh, this is just because this is my transportation version of the Apollo pod which helps bring certain satellites up and certain Kerbals that want to uh, go on uh, go on mission so it's a good combination it's a good example of what I was talking about of using the combination of a civilian contract in 1.0 with another contract to do certain things so yeah I really like I really like how that uh, mechanic opens up uh, I do need to relaunch a space station since I have none in space right now and obviously I also don't have remote tech installed anymore which is kind of a bummer but it's we're not gonna even bother with it right now. It's not even updated to 1.0 yet, so there's still there's still a few mods out there that need to be updated. Now I'm gonna do the uh, retro burn home, and I'm trying to get it as close as possible. So I have never really done a burn home retrograde style, and the difference between going retrograde and prograde is that when you're doing prograde. Uh, your landing site is going to move away from you while you're doing retrograde your landing sites actually going to move closer to you so if I set up uh, my point of reference here where I'm going to hit at that moment that means that I would hit right there if I instantly went to the ground I would hit right there but the problem is that it takes time to get there so what usually happens is that your uh, landing marker will move forward or away from you which will means it moves towards where you want to land if that's what you're trying to do so I did a, a educated guess there educated <laughs> oh boy and here we go so you can tell I do have the new heat shield on here I mean I do have all the science researched still in the game it kinda worked out actually no I don't there's uh, three new branches that I don't have yet that I have to uh, uh, unlock again they're all a thousand uh, science apiece, so we can do some more science to get those done. Mostly the more heavy craft stuff and more advanced craft stuff that we're looking for. I do like the new heat dynamics that are in the game. There is a bug with the heat shields right now. They do not bring you any mass, so it doesn't seem to be a problem for this pod, but a lot of the smaller pods, like if you have the Mark 1 pod and you add the heat shield to it, will make it very hard to keep your uh, your pod pointed blunt end like this and it's been causing a lot of issues with people right now it's going to be fixed in a patch that I heard from uh, Rover Dude but right now if you want to fix it yourself you can go into uh, the config file for the heat shields and fix it that way uh, there's a uh, some there's a there's a setting you could set from one to zero to change it. I don't remember what it is off the top of my head. I'd have to I'd have to look. So maybe you shouldn't take my advice, but just look it up if you, if you're still if the uh, update isn't out yet as of this uh, video. I also do love the fact that they have updated the parachutes. They have made it more uh, you know they made it more better <laughs> they open very slowly now they don't they don't open instantly uh, you're not gonna get your vessel being ripped in half anymore it's uh it's it's really really cool so yeah I like that another mod we don't have to really have unless you want to have more types of parachutes you have more control over then you don't need to uh, install I can't even think of the mod name anymore there we go so everything seems to be good right now I am just going over a few of the things I want to hire a female Kerbal now since this is an existing game I did not have Valentina as a Kerbal knot in my game so I'm looking around I'm looking at you know eventually another thing uh, 
in Kerbal Space Program 1.0, Kerbals now cost money. And it's not, it's much, much worse than what I had in Mission Controller. The more Kerbals you have, the more they cost. As you can tell from the video, if I hire somebody right now, it's going to cost $202 thousand dollars so right now I'm just getting rid of a few Kerbals that I no longer need for I can buy I'm thinking about either getting a pilot or a scientist so I need to count up how many pilots I have I have enough engineers I actually start firing engineers because I have way too many of them so there you go guys um, quick video for you it was only about 15 minutes and we'll see you next time when I get some more missions Ho hopefully we'll get the Apollo missions going I just wanted to make this inner stage course where we're showing where we uh, tra transfer to 1.0 without any real issues other than losing every single craft that we had I guess that's kind of an issue but it doesn't really hurt since we were starting a new a new part of the series anyway where we're just trying to get to Duna so as always guys this is Malkuth1974 thanks for watching and we'll see you later have a great day. Makuth, out of here.